Well, here's a new one. Ooh, they warped that one. They lasted it. Dirty bastards. Here's a new one. Um, don't think you've seen this on here yet. Um, in fact, I'm certain you haven't seen this on here yet. Uh, this here we're going to start on is a uh, this here's a 71 GMC. This is a particular 71 GMC. Uh, this is a. How do you get shit on it after it's been blasted? Um, this is a uh, particular colored 71 GMC. Um, I don't know if these are Canadian or American. Can't say. Neither have been, been taken off for the blasting. A rib because it's a special order color, this here particular unit. I believe only in the one year in 71, and only in GMCs, and you can call it a C10 if it's a GMC, so just shut the fuck up about that. Everybody thinks it's got, it's a 910, it's not a C10, it's a, it's a goddamn C10, for Christ's sake. So, this particular C10 is, uh, this is a special order colored twack. Only in 71, and only GMC, you could get some, some they offered some stuff. Some, some you know, some colorful stuff. Um, this particular truck is pink. I believe it's called coral pink. I think you could get lime green. Jesus, I hate lime green. And I think you could get purple too, I believe. Uh, I don't know the exact production numbers, but they're pretty low. They didn't make a whole bunch of them, especially the pink ones. So, uh, yeah, so this is a, uh, a father-daughter project because uh, she wants a pink truck. I mean, just because your name is Dean, that uh, doesn't mean nothing. Dean wants a pink truck. Her name's not Dean. I'm not telling you what her name is either, so just never mind. Um, her dad is, uh, he, he's a friend of mine, and he lives just a few miles from me out here. And uh, so, yeah, she's kind of stuck with trucks because her dad has a, he's got a couple of trucks. He's got a truck to drive every day of the week. If a week had 13 days in it, he's got a truck to drive every day of the week, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do a pink truck for the daughter. This is how it all starts, right? They bought a complete truck from end to end. Uh, they found the pink one, which is, that's tough to do. They didn't make it there. They're, you don't see a bunch of pink trucks around. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, they found a complete one end-to-end. -end. They bought it with four wheels and four hubcaps and two bumpers and, you know, the whole bit. And they tore it down to sweet diddly poop. Um, they are working on the chassis and whatnot, and they have brought me the cab. This is the cab. What the hell's that? Are you alive or dead? Hmm. So, uh... One of the ways that you can tell that it's a pink truck is factory pink paint in there and factory pink paint there. And if you look inside, it close up there. You, you look inside those holes. See? See what I'm saying there? That's a tricky thing to find too. There's supposed to be a custom em emblem there and they're having a hard time finding the old emblem. Um, but yeah, oh, you know something... Here, just while I'm thinking about it. Now, here's a very little known fact that nobody seems to know. If you look in every one of these trucks down in the corner of the dash, you see that? That's a hole. That there, that's a hole. That hole is a drain hole. Why is that a drain hole? Because from the factory, most of these windshields leaked. So that is engineered drainage for a leaky windshield. So now that drainage is engineered to go down, chuh, runs down through the dash up there, goes through there, um, there's a hole for it to drain, and then it collects there, and it collects there, and in the rocker here, I don't think, you can't really see it, but um, there's some, uh, what would you call it, a fluting or some, some, some kind of shit for the water to drain from there and get into the rocker. And then now in the, oh, I, I am at the, oh, yeah, oh, Jesus. In the bottoms of the rockers here, there is, 
there there's some some uh, some some shit in there as well for the water to drain. Here I'll show you. Oh gosh, right down. <sighs> if you ever wondered on these inner rockers, why they come on, have a look there. Why they have these? And there's another one up there. Um, those are for the hole in the dash to drain out of. Does that make any sense to you? Well, that's what they done. So uh, that is why it is so common to see a really clean. I mean, look at this one. But that is why it is so common to see such a clean. Oh, just a minute. I'm trying to get up to see such a clean truck, but yet have that kind of action. And you'll see really clean trucks with rusty rockers. And that's why. So there, if you didn't know that before, now you do. So there you learn something. The day's over. You can go back to bed now. But, uh, so yeah, I'm going to start where we start on this kind of stuff. I'm going to pull the doors off. And, and then, uh, because it's a keeper, just to make sure nothing happens down there, because you wouldn't want to go through all this shit that we're going to go through on this little cream puff, and then a year later have a rust hole come through a rocker panel on account of it's rusty on the inside and it just hasn't poked through to the outside yet. So actually, uh, when I first looked at this truck, he took one of them, you know, cameras on a stick, on a stick, and stuck it in that hole in the rocker, <clears throat> and uh, had a look inside there, and they're pretty scaly and brown on the insides of them rockers. And what are you going to do with that? Nothing. So I'll show you what we're going to do with that. We're going to do that. We're going to cut all that nice factory steel out, and we're going to put some new steel in it. If it was my truck, I would do the same thing. So there. Never mind about why you're cutting up a perfectly good truck. So just, I didn't ask for your opinion. Although I value it greatly. But anyways, doors off. Some little bits here and there off. And then uh, we'll start at the beginning. Get up there, yes. Get up there, you big bitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> I don't know how you were raised. I don't know if your mom ever showed you this. Maybe she didn't, so I will. We're going to cut this rocker panel off. we got to get it off of there. It's in the way. Just get it out of here. You're out of here. Anyways, see there's little bits of rust in here, eh? And it's, can you see over here? Whatever. It's rusty. Um, so uh, what I do is... I go through it, and this is a good time to be able to do it because everybody's naked. She's all naked here. It's all naked. So I go through, and you find all your spot welds because they're actually really quite obvious. And then, unless you're oblivious, to, unless you're oblivious to the obvious, they're obvious. So I take a little fence, a little felt, me little black sharpie. This is a big, intense. It, I, it was on sale. That's why I have this kind. I don't have a particular. That's what I'm using. God damn it! Just quit. Oh, look at that, a screw busted off. Oh, another screw busted off. Holy shit. Son of a bitch. Anyway, so I take a little Sharpie, and I put a little dot in all my little welds. See that? There's a series of little black dots, because black dots matter, you know. So we got little black dots everywhere. Right? Everywhere. It's, it's just, it's littered with black dots. So what I'm going to do, what I'm fitting to do here, oh, God damn it, I didn't bring my glasses. Well, I'll get my glasses in a sec. Anyways, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to cut the welds out. And I'm not using, I have a spot weld cutter. What do you call it? A barrel bit or some stupid shit. I got one of those, but I don't use it very often. Um, they're not ideal in a lot of areas and curves and stuff. And 
generally they're never the right size. It's either way too big or it's too small. So what I do is I take a little grinder with a little cutoff wheel on it and you give her the back and forth over top of the weld. And uh, I think it works quicker than a spot weld cutter. Uh, it does not damage the panel in behind once you get the gist of what you're doing. And I'll explain the gist of what you're doing to you. Um, so what you want to do is you want to grind through your upper panel. In this case being the waku. You want to grind through the waku. So when you're grinding through the waku, as you're grinding it, it'll just be your shiny silver. As you break through that, if you're paying attention, because you want to pay attention, look alive, would you? You'll start. You, you'll see a shadow around where you have cut through the upper panel, and now you are into that lower panel. You'll see a very faint halo around there. Just going to be a little fine line, and if you're watching, you'll notice it. Sometimes it'll even change color. Sometimes your little halo will even give you a little blue ring around there. So just pay attention, would you? When you see that, stop, because you cut through that upper weld, and now you're into that lower panel. So once you get the gist of it, and you get the hang of it, and you can do it, and when you stop there, you will have done virtually no damage to that inner panel whatsoever. Whereas with the barrel cutter, I mean, inevitably, you've just about always got some kind of welding you got to do to that inner panel for either to fill up your pilot hole or your cutters cut too deep or, I mean, it, it, in my experience, it just makes more work than you need. So that's what I'm going to do. But I forgot my damn glasses. I didn't even know where I put them. Some of my bitch. I thought I had them, too. God damn it. Found them. Got them. You get it? I got it. Um, as much as I would absolutely just love, I would just love <clears throat> to be wearing some highfalutin safety glasses while I'm doing this. Um, I have ICS. <clears throat> so I got to wear these glasses when I do this kind of stuff. ICS stands for I can't see shit. And so I can't hear shit. Did I ever tell you how much I like these earplugs? Little umbrella guys. Oh yeah, in they go. Just give me one of these. Don't get carried away though. All right, shit's gonna get loud up in this bitch. Any minute now. Probably got time to cover your ears. Oh yeah. <coughs> Come here for a minute. I guess I better take y'all. Now, <clears throat> can you hear me? I got earplugs in. Can you see that? So you see what I mean? You can see a little halo around there. Around there, you can see that edge. There you can just about see a circle where the spot weld was. If I get in the right light, you can see a halo. You can see it there. That's what I'm talking about. So that's how long it took to do those. How long would it take to, to drill those out? Probably a little bit longer. Okay? So there you go. Like I said, I don't know if your mom ever taught you that, but maybe I could teach your mom something. Maybe not. Is that offensive? Who gives a shit? I'm going to carry on here. So once you do all that, like I've done, I like to use a, uh, a wood chisel. It surprises me. I've had this a long time, this one. It surprises me how hard you can smash that plastic end. Like, it's even mushroomed over. I knocked a chip out of it once. I don't know how I did that. But you can smash that son of a bitch just like it owes you money. But you get the edge on it. The reason I like these is, is that bevel, hey? It's got a pretty sharp edge on it. Actually, this one's pretty dull. I haven't sharpened it in a while. But that bevel, that works good for wedging underneath the steel. And uh, get out of here, fatty cakes. You're not going to like this kind of stuff. Didn't you hear me say get out of here? You just don't listen good, do you? See that? See what I'm saying to you? You can use an air chisel to do this too if you just want to throw caution to the wind and rip the shit out of everything and punch a bunch of holes that you got to fix. 
But you know, it's like the old saying goes, sometimes if you go slower, it goes faster. Or slow down, it'll go faster. Or whatever the hell the saying is, it's, it holds true. And I mean, you don't got to do it my way. You don't got to do it the way I'm doing it. You can do it however you want if you want to do it wrong. See, you're right here. Can you see or you can't see or can you? Get off me. You're going to poke a hole in me and I don't like that kind of stuff. We've already had this discussion numerous times. At nauseum, we've had this discussion. Quit poking me full of holes. But you see that we're going to go around and work our way around and do that. I'm going to have to going to have to get something else to get into there besides that. He's too fat. He's too fat. Hey, fatty cakes. We're all too fat. This thing is on this uh, whiz banger of a. Uh, I don't know what the hell is this thing. Cab dolly, cab tilter, cab thingamabob. What's this? I don't know. Some so the the dude the the the. So numerous times, I am going to refer to this truck as belonging to a dude because it's just a habit. This truck does not belong to a guy. This truck belongs to a goyle. So, let's retrace our steps, shall we? So, uh, the dude that's the dad of the goyle that owns this truck, I believe that uh, this is his. Um, some dude made it in town. I believe, like in his garage kind of thing or something, I guess. I don't know. So I, I get the idea by looking at it, because we've got four wheels on this side and we've got four wheels on the bottom. And you probably can't see down at the bottom down there, but it's kind of got a bit of a curve to it. So I'm guessing the whole idea is to uh, grab it, uh, start leaning the cab backwards, and then shit your pants and hope that this doesn't hit you in the noggin, which I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to take this in the noggin because I'm going to give this a crack. It might be easier to cut that rocker off with it, with it back. I don't know. Um, that pause was for nervousness. All right, let's see what happens here. Okay, let's see if we can do it now. We got enough room this time. Let's see. <laughs> Cock and balls. Can you see me? How's that look to you? A little precarious, isn't it? Let's go over here. Hey, what do you think of that? Well, let's see what happens here, hey? Now we're on those wheels. Now what? Do we just keep trying to come back? Something tells me it's going to get heavy in a hurry. Kind of worked, I guess. Well, I don't know. The nice part about moving it around is they sand blasted it with this thing on, so everybody's full of sand. All our greasable joints are full of sand. Hey, that's something I've never seen that before. What if they all have that? It was 1971. Some I'm a bitch, eh? Hey? On account of the trucks of 71. All right. Well, actually, that does put that at a nicer, nicer height. So uh, I guess we'll. God damn it, we'll get back at it now, won't we? Hey, watch what I'm doing here, would you? <clears throat> You want? I don't know. Do you give a shit? Showing you anyways. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, still got a cold, hey? 
So these wood chisels, that's a wood chisel I'm using. For the wood. Um, they got a bevel on the side too, hey? So you can buy panel splitting. I don't know what the fuck they are. It's like a chisel, but it's got a hook and a bevel into this and that. And you'll pay five times as much for that as you will for this. So I got one of these. So you get her in there. Yeah? Give her some of this. Now you're in there past that, right? Did you hear that? That was it busting loose. Here, listen. What are you hanging on? What's the matter with you? That's right. Get off of there, you dirty bastard. You dirty bastard. Let's look at my CSS up here alone. Can't see shit. <sighs> Got no good I'll just put that on the floor. Got no good hammer hanger. Back here seemed really good, but it, it ain't, it, there ain't much life left in it. And down in here, that's going to go through sooner than later. <clears throat> and yet from the outside, it looks fine. So you don't really know until you dig into it. Yo diggity. And we, and, and we dig into it. See, and until you dig into it, you don't know what kind of shape that's going to be in either because they will clack down there and they will rot. That is in fantastic shape. Clear, fuzzy. Clear, fuzzy. I believe the other side's in pretty damn good shape too. Let's have a look see. Oh, quit hitting that, would you? Oh, yeah. Spiffy. So before I do a bunch more to this, I'm going to blast that stuff. That stuff there. And this stuff here. Here, let's see what it's like to put this back down again. All right. Engage uh, shrinker tightening. Here we go. Ain't nothing to do it but to do it, right? Oh, that's tools inside. Huh. Here we go. Going down. And some more. Hey, it worked. So that's it. That's all we're doing. That's the documentary for today on cutting out rusty rocker panels on, ooh, look at that dink. Oh, that's a good little, that is a good hammer there. And you know something else, if you didn't do that, <clears throat> how would you get all that sand out of there? I mean, that is like, that is a whole day at the beach. That looks like the floor of the booth when I'm painting shit. That's so bad there. Yeah, that's it. I, when I say that's it, I mean, God damn it, now that's it. <laughs>